In my personal study of the scriptures, I have been impressed by the conversion soul of the Tarsus, who later became known as Paul, as described in the Bible. Paul was an active man in the persecution of the church and the Christians, but because of the power of heaven and the atonement of Jesus Christ, he was changed completely, and he became one of the great servants of God. His model of life was the Savior, Jesus Christ. In one of Paul's teachings to the Corinthians, he invited them to be his follower, as he himself was a follower of Christ. This is a sincere and valid invitation from Paul's time until today to be a follower of Christ. I began to reflect on what it means to become a follower of Christ, and more important, I began to ask in what way should I imitate him? To be a follower of Christ is to strive to conform our actions, conduct, and the lives to those of the Savior. It is to acquire virtues. It is to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. I have studied some aspects of the Savior's life, and I have written as part of my message today four of his qualities that I try to imitate and that I share with you. The first quality of the Savior is humility. Jesus Christ was very humble from the primordial life. At the council in heaven, he recognized and allowed the will of God to prevail in the plan of salvation for mankind. He said, Father, thy will be done, and the glory be thine forever. We know that Jesus Christ taught humility and humbled himself to glorify his Father. Let us live in humility because it brings peace. Humility precedes glory, and it brings God's favor upon us. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and they giveth grace to the humble. Humility brings gentle answers. It is a source of a righteous character. Elder Del G. Renland taught, individuals who walk humbly with God remember what Heavenly Father and the Jesus Christ have done for them. We act honorably with God by walking humbly with him. The second quality of the Savior is courage. When I think of Jesus Christ at the age of 12, sitting in the temple of God, among the doctors of the law, and teaching them divine things, I know that he already had, very early in his life, a good sense of courage, a particular courage. While most will expect to see the young boy being taught by the doctors of the law, he was teaching them as they were hearing him and asking him questions. We served the full-time mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo Mbujimai mission from 2016 to 2019. The way to travel in the zone, the mission from one zone to another was by road. A phenomenon has arisen in that area, with bandits armed with bladed weapons, breaking onto the roads and disturbing the movement of travelers. Five missionaries traveling from one zone to another as part of the transfer were victims of these disturbances. Having been victims of this phenomenon ourselves sometimes before, we began to fear for the life and the safety of all of us, even hesitating to travel on those roads to visit the missionaries and the whole zone conferences. We didn't know how long it was going to last. I drew up a report which I sent to the area presidency, and they expressed my feelings of fear about continuing to travel when the road was the only way to reach our missionaries. In his reply, Elder Kevin Hamilton, who was our president of the Africa Southeast area, wrote to me, my counsel is to do the best you can. Be wise and be prayerful. Do not knowingly put yourselves and your missionaries in harm's way, but at the same time, go forward in faith. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This exhortation greatly strengthened us and allowed us to continue to travel and serve with courage until the end of our mission, because we heard the direction from our Father in heaven through that scripture. In modern scripture, we read the inspired word of the prophet Joseph Smith, reflecting the Lord's encouragement to us. Brethren, shall we not go on in so great a cause? Go forward and knock backward. Courage, brethren, and on, on to the victory. Let us have the courage to do what is right, even when it is unpopular. The courage to defend our faith and to act by faith. Let us have the courage to repent daily. The courage to accept God's will and obey his commandments. Let us have the courage to live righteously and to do what is expected of us in our various responsibilities and the positions. The third quality of the Savior is forgiveness. During his mortal ministry, the Savior prevented a woman who had been taken in adultery from being stoned. He charged her to go and see no more. This moved her toward repentance and eventual forgiveness, for as the scripture records, the woman glorified God from that hour and believed on his name. During a Christmas devotional in December 2018, our dear president, Russell Mel Nelson, spoke about four gifts we have received from the Savior. He said that one gift the Savior offers is the ability to forgive. Through his infinite atonement, you can forgive those who have hurt you and who may never accept the responsibility of their cruelty to you. It is usually easy to forgive one who sincerely and humbly seeks your forgiveness but the Savior would grant you the ability to forgive anyone who has mistreated you in any way. Let us sincerely forgive each other to obtain the forgiveness of the Father. Forgiveness sets us free and makes us worthy to partake of the sacrament every Sunday. Forgiveness is required of us to be truly disciples of Jesus Christ. The fourth quality of the Savior is sacrifice. It is part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Savior gave the supreme sacrifice of his life for us so that we would be redeemed. Feeling the pain of sacrifice, he asked his father to keep the cup away, but he wanted to the end of the eternal sacrifice. This is the atonement of Jesus Christ. President M. Russell, President M. Russell Ballard told this, Sacrifice is the demonstration of pure love, the degree of our love to the Lord for the gospel and for our fellow men can be measured by what we are willing to sacrifice for them. We can sacrifice our time to perform ministering, to save others, to do good, to do family's work, and to magnify our church calling. We can give of our financial means to, by paying tithing, fast offerings, and the other donations to build the kingdom of God on earth. We need sacrifice to keep the covenant we, made, we have made with the Savior. My prayer is that by following Jesus Christ and the drawing upon the blessings of his atonement, we become more and more humble. We are more courageous. We forgive more and more, and we sacrifice more for his kingdom. I testify that the Heavenly Father lives, and he knows each of us individually, that Jesus is the Christ, that President Russell M. Nelson is God's prophet today. I testify that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the kingdom of God on the earth, and the Book of Mormon is true. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen.